Hey guys, Reynard here and today I'm going to share with you guys a few tips and tricks on how you can become a better looper with the Boss RC505 Loop Station. Hope you enjoy. So in this video I'm going to start with the basics of the Boss RC505 and then I'm going to take it to advanced levels and then I'm going to do a live demonstration and then at the end I'm going to give you guys a bonus tip. Hope you enjoyed the video. Alright guys, I'm just going to go over the basics of the RC505 loop station. It's a 5 track stereo looper and you can overdub 3 hours in total, it's more than enough. It's got volume failures which is a bit fragile. Mine is already broken, um, so take good care of your loop station because they can break easily and it's not easy to replace. You've got your input effects, your output effects on your loops and each loop you can go in and edit, reverse, you can level spanning. So if you want to do a stereo recording you can pan your loops, you can set this one to left, this one to middle left, middle. Uh, a little bit right and far right, and then you get a very nice stereo spectrum. You've got loop sync, you've got tempo sync, so you can have a loop playing on its own and the other loops being synced up. And uh, yeah, it's a very, very versatile unit. You can go crazy with it. So yeah, and then inputs, you've got a mic input, you've got an instrument input, um, you've got an aux input as well, which I actually use. I find the aux input to have better Clarity, um, but that is debatable. I would actually like to hear your take on which input do you guys use. Um, I use a mixer and then from my mixer it goes into the loop station and I just find using the aux cable is way, way better. And um, yeah, then you got your um, foot switch that I use a very rustic Boss FSU foot switch. Uh, as you can see, it's not that pretty anymore. Um, and that allows me to start all my loops, record on loop two, record um, start only loop two. It's, it's quite versatile for only two foot switches. You got your basic, you got your system settings, you got your memory settings. I'm not gonna go into too much detail um, about those now. I'm um, just doing a quick little basic rundown of the unit. So that's said and done, let's go to tip number one. So tip number one, I'm gonna talk about input effects. So you got your input effects which allows you to just use it as a type of multi effects so you can either have them playing only one at a time or you can go to memory and you turn on multi input effects so that allows you to have more than one effect up to three effects um, that you can record into the loops so what I normally do is I just keep it on single for now uh, single and then I use I'm just gonna for this video purpose I'm just gonna use a mic I'm not that great of a beatboxer or anything but um, the effects are actually really nice so I'm just gonna create a simple beat so then your input effects, this is bass. And then you can choose between so many different effects. As you can see, I've got it on uh, 
slicer. So slicer with my delay on a different device gives me a nice Then you, then you can combine different sounds to make it a bit more interesting. So yeah, the, that's just stopping them. And double tapping allows you to delete all your loops. And that you do in, you go into system and you, oh, you go to quick clear. Enables you to double tap and the loop will be deleted. So that is it for input effects. Let's go to output effects, which is step number two. I'm just gonna create a quick loop and show you how to manipulate your loops and uh, make it a bit more interesting. creating a short loop my bass effect on okay so now we can change the actual loops that's that was recorded with output effects. So when you tap, for instance, I'm gonna create a bit of a transition sound. I put them, put it on filter, and that gives it a nice sweeping effect. And then I tap the roll function, and it creates this. And then start all. Gives it a nice sweep transition sound. And you can also do like a bit of a change where you do the same thing. So yeah, these knobs controls the last activated effect. So yeah, that's um, just a quick little um, tip on how to make your loops sound interesting. And if you guys want to see what how I set this up, so filter on effect C. I don't know, for some reason, uh, the effects are a little bit different on each one. Let's say you've got a filter there, and you've got a filter there. I find that they do different things than having them on opposite sides. That could just be my unit, or it could be a thing, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have the same issue. Otherwise, um, yeah, so my settings, I'll just quickly run down th th through the settings and you can check it out what I use. Da -da -dum, da -da -dum, da -da -dum. So that's, uh, that's that. And for the roll effect, I use that, 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 and for this speed scatter effect, I use those, very simple, and you can play around with it, I mean, there's tons of combinations that you can use to just make your loops more interesting and make it not sound like a loop always. So going on to tip number three. Uh, arrangement, composing, and all that stuff is um, a very 
important topic, I believe, on the Boss RC505 or just looping in general. Um, so you've got five different loops at your disposal and you can overdub as many times on each loop. Yeah, it's, it's endless. It's, it's, seriously, it's endless. So just to give you an example, what I do is I usually, um, to combine this with a small foot switch that I have, so I use um, I usually start with a beat. So beat is super important to start with. So you have a click track at least. So I normally create that on loop one. So something like so yeah, just a basic loop. And then I usually create my my bass and my drop sound like where the the drop is going to happen because this loop is set to be activated when I tap foot switch B and that allows me to create a bit of a drop so let's say I have my just my normal arpeggio sound going something like So then when I tap, when I stop the this loop and all the other loops are going and I stop all the loops and start it again, this is my bass and where all the heavy sounds are coming in. So uh, yeah, that's just a little composition tip. And um, also how to set up your foot switch controller. Um, to give you more versatile versatility um, is that even a word versatility yes to allow you to just be more flexible reverse function on this works also really well so just for example reverse function reverse function reach one sounds like you speaking Russian or something but if you put um, just a melody through that it really makes it so interesting so for instance if I just go and Gives you a bit more uh, versatility as well, um, just to make your loops more interesting. If you combine that with uh, certain chord progressions, you really do get interesting sounds. And also to mix it up, if you already recorded your loops, sometimes you can just quickly make it reverse and it just gives you a different chord progression almost, depending on what you play. Um, All right, so for MIDI sync, MIDI sync works really well on this unit. So I got this going to a groove box, which is called an Ovation Circuit. And then from an Ovation Circuit, it goes to a Strymon Timeline Delay. And it just sends out a perfect clock sync to those units and everything is in perfect timing. And um, when I start a loop and once it plays back, those units start on whatever the tempo is that you set it to be. So that's really, really, really amazing. All right. I'm just quickly gonna show you guys how I put my music together. So as you all know, most of you know, this is live looping it's called live looping so i have a pedal here that just simply when i tap one of these five pedals it records whatever i do play say thank you 
when I tap one of these five pedals, it records whatever I do play. So, thank you. When I tap one of these five pedals, it records whatever I do play. So, thank you. When I tap one of these five pedals, it okay, so that's just the simple basics of live looping. So, I'm just gonna start with a simple beat with my voice. So something like boots and cats. Mixed together sound something like Okay, so there's just boots and cats. Now I'm just gonna add some claps to that. So there goes a basic beat, triangle, boots and cats, and claps. So this chair I'm sitting on is actually a drum. It's called the Spanish Cajon. And it's a chair, so I sit on it, which is nice. And I can put my clothes in there when I travel. So it's a three-in-one drum, and it sounds something like this. This, as you all know, is a, do you know, do you guys know what the instrument this is? It's a, a slide didgeridoo. So I can actually tune it, and uh, yeah, it sounds something like this. Does anybody know the name of this instrument? Cello, yes. El electric cello to be specific, but you're there. Um, so yeah, this is a cello and it's very compact, so I can just plug it in and start playing, which is nice. I used to have a big acoustic cello and with all my equipment in the car, it just snapped it off. So I decided to go a little bit more compact. And yeah, it sounds something like this. Thank you. 
anybody know the name of this instrument? Almost. <laughs> if you can scream it out, you can win the latest CD. Sorry? It is a kudu horn, but there's a specific name for the... Sorry? Almost, almost. There's another name for it. Yes! It's called uh, Shofar, and it's got Israeli Hebrew origins. And it sounds something like this: this, 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 this. and building and building. This is called a Turkish Darbuka. sounds together sounds something like this like this like this like this like this like this
Thank you. So that's just a little insider to how I put my music together. So my bonus tip for you guys is to use this unit as a verse chorus bridge type of way to compose your songs. It's really, really powerful. And um, I'm just gonna give you an example um, with my voice. So if I create a beat, something like, and I want to do my verse, or let's say my chorus on two. Chorus one two chorus one two chorus one two, and then verse chorus, here chorus one two, verse verse one two three verse verse one two three verse verse one two three bridge bridge one two three bridge bridge one two three chorus one two chorus one two verse verse one two three chorus one two bridge bridge one two three chorus one two bridge bridge one two and then when i started all it starts with one two the chorus so that gives you uh, amazing flexibility and that allows you to make your loops not sound like loops and an actual band playing and if you guys want to know how to set it up like this i'm just going to give you the display and you can uh, check it out so just a, a side note this this one i used to be synced to all the other loops just like this one so if i create um if i play the chorus, chorus one two chorus one two I can have anything play on this loop and it will be synced with all the others. I can have anything play on this loop and it will be synced with all the others. I can have anything play on this loop and it will be synced with all the others. I can have anything play on this So to show you guys how I did that, uh, let me go through the settings. So Input of first track effects from overdub mode. Single that's important one. Really important. And then record end, quantize, loop length, all start. Okay, so that's that for the memory settings and then if we go to the track settings you need to have your tracks that you want to be the verse chorus bridge to be set up like this <clears throat> one shot off track effects on play mode single important Start mode, immediate, stop mode, immediate, measure one. Um, you don't have to put that on measure one. Let's just see if I delete all this, what it says now. Um, measure three, loop sync on, tempo sync on. Okay, and then for the loop, that's gonna be auto. So the loop that's going to be your click track auto. Um, let's just see. Yeah, so the verse chorus bridge on free, the click track on auto, and then click track, back to click track. we got loop sync, tempo sync, all that on. Stop mode immediate. Play mode multi. That's really important. So that one's going to be playing this one is going to be playing but they are going to be single the the verse chorus bridge single and the this one and this one they're going to be on multi 
as you see. And that is it for to be able to play in a verse chorus bridge fashion. And I really do hope that helped you guys to get a bit more out of your Boss RC505 loop station. So if you guys like the video, please like, comment and share. Um, if you guys want to find out anything, just drop a comment. And um, thank you for watching.